Hello, my name is Nimish Patel, also known as Psycho Bob, and I've been commissioned by GameSpot UK to create a 3D printing of that crazy robot that we all love from Borderlands, Claptrap. In the video you're about to watch, I'll be showing you how I went about creating the initial 3D model on the computer ready for 3D printing. Well, the first step of the process is to gather up all the reference material I can find on the internet. This generally involves searching for a few hours, gathering up screenshots from the game, any fan art maybe that I could find, and also I look on YouTube for any videos that may be of help. I also have a dual monitor set up and one of those monitors supports multiple inputs so I have my Xbox plugged into that monitor so I can always boot up the game for any first hand reference in a picture in picture window. I decided to use CAD software for this particular project as not only is Claptrap's design quite well suited for this, it also creates some very very clean meshes for 3D printing. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Before I actually start in the model, I made some very rough reference images in Photoshop and used them as backdrops to help guide me. You can actually see those in the footage and they were based off the reference images I found on the internet. I also made a plan on how to break down the model into separate parts. This is just so when I have the physical model printed out and in front of me, this will make it a lot easier to apply the various paint effects or wire in any of the electronic components. I started off with the main body, as it's not only the largest and most defining part of the model, but what I'll also be using as a base foundation for all the other connecting parts. So I began by making the general wedge shape of the body and moved on to cutting out the areas at the base of the model where the wheel would fit in. Claptrap being symmetrical meant that I only had to model half the body and mirror things over afterwards when ready. So you may notice in the footage that sometimes I'm ignoring one side of the model. As mentioned earlier, I have a dual monitor set up. So on the second monitor that you can't see, I generally have reference images open, but I also on this screen have the Shapeways website open. This is the 3D printing bureau that I'll be using to print the model, and the reason I have this open is so I always have access to their material specification sheets. This information is important when designing for 3D printing, as you don't want to make any of the parts of the model too small for printing or too thin. There's nothing worse than spending hours and hours on a model only to find that some of the details won't come out in the final print, or the model itself won't print because you broke some of the specification guidelines. And these specifications unfortunately change depending on what material you're printing, so you have to make sure you're looking at the correct ones. For instance, the material I'll be printing this in is called White Strong and Flexor. It has a much more formal and less memorable name, but this is what Shapeways calls it. For this material, 0.7mm is the minimum wall thickness, and 0.2mm is the minimum detail size. So throughout the modeling process, I'll be referring to the specification guidelines to make sure I'm not doing anything that will cause any print issues. And of course, I'll be referring to the reference material on the second monitor. Sometimes that's the images I've downloaded from the internet, sometimes it's video footage, and sometimes it's just me playing on the game. As the model continues to develop, I routinely check my downloaded reference images and also the game, making any adjustments to the model as necessary. As I don't have any exact blueprints for Claptrap, everything is done by eye, and I realised after starting the model that my Photoshop backdrop images were a little bit off, so I adjusted the model accordingly so it's a bit closer to the correct shape. Making these adjustments by eye is something that is done throughout the entire modelling process, as I don't have any exact dimensions for the character. Now that the main body was roughly shaped out, I could begin creating some of the other parts and start making this look a little bit more like Claptrap. Whilst creating any of these parts, I always had to keep in mind those printing specs, Sometimes this meant changing details on Claptrap, or unfortunately, removing some of those details altogether just so it could be printed. As mentioned earlier, before starting the model, I planned out how to split up the model exactly. Some things were obvious to split out as separate parts, such as a wheel, so I could get the wiring in easier, but others were split into separate parts just to make the painting process easier, as I had planned to apply various painting techniques to the model. The plan was to split this model into roughly 25 pieces to tailor all of my painting and wiring needs, Claptrap could have easily been printed in 7 or 8 pieces, but as mentioned I had other plans so it was split into many more pieces. Until this point in the modelling process all the parts had been solid objects. Not only would printing them as they currently are prove to be more expensive than necessary, it also left me with no way to fit the electronic components into the model. So I began hollowing out the parts whilst keeping the minimum wall thickness in mind, the structural strength and also how I wanted the electronic components to fit into the model. I also made tabs and slots on the pieces so it would be easier to line up and assemble once printed. This also helps increase the joint strength between parts. I had finally finished the modelling stage, now all that was left to do before preparing the final package to Shapeways was to pose the model and make sure everything looked okay. 
Some of the parts would be thin and rather than having weak poseable joints, I felt it was much better to weld the joint into the pose so it's more structurally sound. And here it is, the finished pose model. Welcome to Firestone. I am CL4PTP. You may call me by my locally designated name, Hot Trap. For continuing, please accept this echo communication device and heads up display, provided free of charge by the Dull Corporation. Now it's time to pack model data into a file for upload to Shapeways. When I create models, they're generally either in a more traditional modeling software like Luxology Modo, or occasionally in CAD software, like you've been watching so far. No matter which software I create the model in, you're generally working with a proprietary formatted file, so it needs to be converted to one that Shapeways can accept. Generally I export to an STL formatted file. The CAD software allows me to directly export to this format. Once it's been exported, I then use a free program called NetFab to check the data and make sure there's no issues. NetFab is a great free program. Some tools and functions are locked out to you unless you upgrade to the professional version, but for the purpose I'll be using this for, it's not going to be an issue as I have access to all the tools I need. NetFab will let me double check the wall thickness at various points in the model, the polygon count, and also whether the model is manifold. Shapeways has a polygon limit in the model, so this needs to be checked before uploading to them. Now that the STL file has been created and checked in NetFab, it's time to upload the file to Shapeways. When you upload the file to the website, it will go through an automatic check system which will check for the most common issues in the model. Generally, the automated check is completed in about 15 or 20 minutes. Once it is completed, you'll receive an email notification and your upload becomes visible in the My Models section of your account. From here, the model is ready for ordering and once you order the model, the model will go through some additional human checks, but if all goes well, the model will be then printed and shipped to you. Well, this wraps up the video for the modeling process. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it formative and enjoyed it.